Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game, and welcome back to the letter. Let's get this party started. We've only got a few more variant endings to go. So today we're going to start off with having Becca visit Bella in hospital. So that means we're going to get Bella into a coma. And only Becca is going to survive out of the friends group. So yeah, hey! I'll bring you in if and when something changes, guys. See you in a little bit. Oh, well, something changed here. We're in Ashton's chapter, obviously, because everybody else is 100%. Yes, humble brag. <laughs> so, we just had a chitty chat with Luke at the precinct and then ran into Rebecca in Isabella's room. And, uh, you know, Luke is the very... I mean, Becca is the very person that Luke's been friendly with from the start. She falters the second I drop Scumbag's name, disbelief all over her features. Uh, are you sure it's him? This must be a mistake. Yup, quite sure it's the bastard we saw at the precinct, in all his pompous glory. What was Zachary even doing in the mansion? Breaking and entering? Are you kidding me? I know Zachary can look a bit intimidating at first glance, but he's not the kind of person who will do those things. That's exactly what I told the geezers at the precinct, but they won't listen. Apparently, they caught him in the act. Of course they won't. They're up against Wright's smug face, for fuck's sake. He's the one who has the money. I'll talk to him. Okay, we might be able to skip. I don't know this will be different, but I'll try. Do you really think you'll listen to reason? Okay, and negatory. Just remember that she almost came too close to taking Isabella from us. It's true. You're lucky someone's still here. Oof. You're the one who kept brushing all of this cursed thing off. In fact, you're the one who dismissed Isabella first. Becca, don't be so muffled. Come back to us. The last one feels like a slap in the face, really. Rebecca has a knack for being brutally honest with her opinions. We've often clashed at times, yet I still respect her for it. Enough to skip through her dialogue. I've already come close to losing Isabella. Although Zack's not in a better situation, he's alive. I'm not losing him and Rebecca, too. Okay. Interesting. So it looks like we're going to get, like, some nodes cleared with Becca, which is delightful. Because that means we're getting closer to Ashton 100%. Sooner or later, she'll get us like she almost did with Isabella. Damn it, I hope Zack's okay where they're keeping him. Okay, so we should have a few small changes. So I'm just going to keep you guys until those where it's like, well, we almost lost Isabella. We almost lost her. Remember, easy to forget. One of us is still fighting for her life, desperately holding on to it because she can be quite stubborn like that. Or one of us is being framed for a crime he likely didn't commit. Isabella would never let me hear the end of it either if she was here. Though perhaps it is for the better she isn't here to see us. Knowing her, she'll worry, despite what goes unsaid between us. With one of us absent and the other stuck in a jail cell. Yeah. And no matter how many times I apologize to her, we don't even know if Isabella will come back to us. You want me to admit it? Fine. This whole mess is tearing me apart. We should have listened. Fuck. I should have listened. But I just stood there. Just... Just judging her, and, and I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to do right now. Okay. Hey, we made it past a bunch of stuff. Okay. Great. That this time I have permanently lost someone in my life. Okay. We'll keep skipping. Sorry, we're gonna have to see Zach. Ew, Zach, I'm it's sorry. It's the same problem with that girl's case. The one who got involved in an accident over at the 13th Avenue almost a week ago. Interesting. So he brings that up if Zach is dead. <sighs> the media will have a field day when they learn of this, Frey. Keep it mum for now. I'll let you know because he's your... Well, you deserve to know. The poor bloke's your friend, after all. Just like Isabella's mangled body that night, barely breathing and still desperately clinging on to her life. Another memory that will probably haunt me until my last dying breath. Okay. Now we have to go give Becca the bad news. With Zach gone and Isabella still in a coma, her well-being is my top priority, and I'm not just about to drag her in there with me. 
My apprehension must have been quite obvious in my face. In a sudden motion, Rebecca reaches out and taps my arm. Although she does it gently, it startles me nevertheless, and it's enough to put a worried look on her. Okay. So what am I- I think I'm being vague with you in, in this one. Yes. I need to head off somewhere tonight. Okay, so that was a positive with her. Instead of just keeping her in the dark. Just want to clear these. Great. Okay. Are you guys smooching? No smooches. Okay. We're just friends this time, so I should be able to bring you guys in in a little while. Who can tell my friend what might have happened here? She's at the crawl. Okay. You know the place, right? So, again, brought in because one person's alive at the crawl. You know the place, right? Double, you know the place. And trail off, letting the meaning of my words hang in the air. I want to be optimistic about this, really. However, I'm going against something almost everyone can't quite understand. I'm just being realistic with my chances. McCullough seems to understand this as well after what I've said. Any sign of protest has already died from her tongue, and she simply looks at the taser quietly. After a moment, she just nods. Okay. Story updated. So, again, I'll bring you in when Becca's here to save our butt. Okay, our girl's here. McCullough's also with her. Of course, she didn't agree- she didn't listen to me, even if I've already exceeded the 15 minutes we've agreed on. Although, color and strength seems to have already returned to her, enough for her to be able to stand unassisted. The empty plate on the counter appears to have played a part on that. Good news, I guess. As for the other one, however... Relieved as I am that she has had the sense not to venture deeper into the mansion, I can't keep but roll my eyes at her. Although, she preempts me with a reprimand of her own. Did you really think you could hide this from me? I had to, Becca. You know, if I didn't ask a G, I wouldn't even have any idea. I know I said I won't stop you, but I had no idea this was where you planned on going. So the first thing you did is go straight here, too. What do you think? And how did you even get in here? All three of us exchange a look. One that I absolutely don't like. Someone was screaming, Ash. It led me here. Without warning, the door behind me slams shut. We need to get out of here. <laughs> Screw it. I need to get these people out of here. I gotta go. Goodbye. Forever. Okay, there's no Zachary to help the ladies through. So, we'll see what happens here. Oh, Rebecca's the chivalrous one. Ew. Rebecca helps McCullough first. Man, McCullough is such a giant woman. What is the... Just out of curiosity... What am I looking for? Profiles. Rebecca is 5'5", five five, Marianne is 5'11". <laughs> and she fell on her and she got squished. Assisting her up and through the gap, the moment the interior designer's in, I nod for her to go through. Go ahead. I'll watch her back. Surprisingly, she follows without any protests. Not that there's any need to. Sometime after entering this room, the whole place has calmed down. No wails, no whispers, just a silence too deafening. But I'm not letting my guard down until everyone's on the other side of this nightmare safe. For all I know, this may just be a calm before another storm. Without further incident, however, Rebecca makes it to the other side and I'm following after her. However odd this hush is, I turn my back from it and climb up. It's a tight fit, but I manage to squeeze myself in. The unease remains, though. Okay. Alright. I think Luke's actually going to be stuck in the study with all of his lady love, so that should be interesting. The handgun catches my eyes first, next to that smarmy smile on his face while he holds McCullough and Rebecca at gunpoint. It's sight enough to lodge a painful thorn up my throat. I've been too complacent, too focused on other things that I've completely set aside the fact the scumbag will not be too pleased to see us here without knowing our reasons. But even with those... Good intentions, curses, and ghostly apparitions aside, we're still trespassing in his home. The question is if he's even aware that the whole of his household has somehow disappeared, and he might be the only one here. Likely not. Fuck. Even with people he knows among the crowd, there's a significant effort in him not to simply shoot everyone in sight. And really, Daisy, even you, what would Kylie say? Luke, this isn't what you're thinking. 
You have to listen to us. There's something going on here. Well, obviously, why else would people be trespassing in my home? What's your excuse? Checking on Tio, Luke? Is this an evaluation you teachers are so fond of? Is that it? Is this what this is? Is that it? I'm doing good, by the way. Carly just paid a visit yesterday. Lots of drawings involved. Luke, please. Oh, please what? Just... Just this once, will you listen to what people are telling you? You need to leave this place as soon as you can. Tut tut tut, a good enough excuse, darling. You people are the ones who need to get out of my sight. Don't worry, I might consider pressing lighter charges for the woman. Can't say the same for feathers here, though. Interesting. Okay. I like the- oh, man, I love the little subtle details like that. It's so good. What's really now? I swear! People need to stop breaking into my house! This is how you want to start the week. Why don't we just go with a bloody massacre if we want to surprise people in their homes, huh? Casually, he waves the handgun at them as if it's just a mere toy and his words are no threat. The safety's off on his, nothing stopping him from pushing through with his words. Call me paranoid, but at the slight gesture I draw my own and level it at him. Finger on the trigger and ready to release the safety catch in case things go south. Okay, should be able to skip. And sorry, Ash, you have to die because only Becca can visit sorry Isabella. About this. I really bang bang. Okay. All right, so you took that for Becca. There's Hannah. Okay, so we're starting in Luke's chapter, so it's probably gonna be a fairly big section I can skip through here. I will bring you in when something changes. All right, it's time for another Luke joke. And from where I stand at the top of the stairs, I can e easily make out their forms, recognize them even. It's all gone crazy when these intruders come into my house. I'm no stranger to a cop playing dirty. The smart ones kn knew that neither life nor criminals are going to play fair. But Daisy, what will Kylie think of her Miss Pink if the poor tyke finds out about this? Not to mention Mint. Hannah trusted her. I trusted her to be a professional at the very least, for fuck's sake. Well, well, what have we here? <laughs> if I were any less sober, I'd say this is the beginning of a joke. Bloody trespassers. What is wrong with these people? Do they really think I'll be fine with them walking into my home like this? What are they even doing in here? If I didn't know any better, they might also be behind Hana's disappearance. That's right, my love. They must have a motive. Make them pay. And it better be a good one. To us. Or a bullet to the head is the least all of them will deserve. I don't make a habit of harming women, of course, but this is just crossing the line. Let's see. A high school teacher and an interior designer walk into a mansion. Boom! Thunder crackles once again, cutting me off. This time, its sound hits close enough that it nearly feels as if the windows and the ground itself are rumbling. All is deathly still for a moment. I might be able to skip this, we'll see. I don't let it stop me, however, as I slowly make my way towards them. Nope, this is a whole new branch, okay. Taking one careful step at a time, relishing the expression of fear in their eyes. I suppose there's something ominous in this setting, with the heavy rain outside and the lack of light here. I kinda like it, to be honest. Add something to the atmosphere. I suppose I must look like the villain now. But short of me getting close to them, a noise to my left distracts me, briefly halting my movements while curiosity takes over every murmurs in my head. And it's a good thing, perhaps, that I did, because as soon as I look up, I see him. The detective from a few days ago. The one Lee mentioned. Just as he's about to jump down from furniture that has somehow ended up piled and blocking the door to the parlor. What happened there? And did he really think it's alright to do that in other people's house? Lout. Teach him, my lord. Put him in his place. My hand's already moving before any rationale can stop me. Fingers firm at my gun when I finally release the safety from it and take aim. Not at him, but at his friends. They are his, aren't they? Why else would they be here together? Doesn't matter. I know his kind follows some form of moral standard. He won't let an innocent be harmed, especially people he cares about. My finger on the trigger is more than itching to shoot, but I hold back. Sure, I could have simply taken aim at him. But more than seeing him bleed, I want to see the expression on his face once he realizes everything he's doing is futile. He's trapped. Lives are in my hand. His life's in my hand. Had I known there would be a party in my own home tonight, 
I would have opened a bloody bottle or two. People these days, in my own home. Can you believe it? I feel so left out. I can tell the exact moment the realization dawns on him. A short second of his body freezing and blood draining from his face as soon as his feet hits the floor and he looks up. He's already a prey. Don't worry. I might consider pressing lighter charges for the woman. Can't say the same for feathers here, though. What's really now? I swear! People need to stop breaking into my house! This is how you want to start the week. Why don't we just go with a bloody massacre if we want to surprise people in their homes, huh? Okay. Good, we can skip. Delightful. Alright. Okay. And then our final choice. We have to demand Hana's release. Maximum love. Don't hesitate. There we go. Okay. It's a slow thing. A whisper more than a bang as the darkness creeps into every corner of the room. The walls shudder and groan. Blood runs from the ceiling, crawls down the walls, and stains the floor. It feels as if life itself is being sucked from the house slowly but surely. The beauty of the place is gone, with only the dead, decaying remains of a mansion left in its wake. I don't have to wonder if it is just the foyer that's become this nightmarish place. I can already hear it. Gone are the growling of thunder and the lashings of rain and wind against the foyer's high windows. All of it has been replaced by a more grating sound. A cacophony of voices from nowhere and everywhere echoing throughout the now horrid walls. Voice that neither belongs to us nor the people who live here. What? What's going on? Help! Please! All throughout the house, shouts of alarm and surprise ring out. A mirror to the horror creeping up in each of us. Who wouldn't be shocked? This is... insane. Even Daisy, feisty woman that she is, trembles at the sight of it. Brave of her, though, I have to admit, to not just run at the first sign of trouble. I'm not sure how she can even keep herself together, having witnessed the death of a friend. Or is he a lover? Not that she has any other choice in this. There seems to be no end in sight to this insanity. If anything, this only feels like it's the beginning of the end. Help me! Oh my god! Please! Somebody! Anybody! Uh, who are you? Stay! Stay away! No, no, no! Stay away! Stay! Stay away! No! She's here! You've gotta let me out! She's gonna kill me! Someone! She's- We're all in danger! I thought you were my friends! Why don't you believe me? I'm sorry. Their screams fill the mansion. She laughs all the while, a harsh agonizing sound that goes on for what feels like forever. Alright. Gotta try this again. Probably won't let me skip. Until there's nothing but silence, her horrid smile and pale hands reaching out to me. Okay, it's its own branch, that's fine, it gives me a percentage. Calling, beckoning, pleading. I'm terrified, I really am like I should be, but I have never been one to truly stay afraid. I've long learned that fear will not get me anywhere. Cowering in a corner doesn't keep me safe and it will not keep me alive. Not like rage does. I've learned to use this burning hate inside of me to survive. There is no difference now. Uh, stay away from me! Why? Why do you wish to leave? This is where you belong, my lord. Remember the blood we share? This is your home. Don't you remember? You promised to return. To stay. Together with me. With us. With people no different from you. W what is she talking about, Luke? What does she mean? Don't listen to her, she lies. I promised no such thing to anyone. Hana, you're the one who bought this house. How should I know what she's bobbling about? I never even wanted to be here in the first place. A terrible case of mistaken identity. That must be it. I'm quite sure of it. I don't know this woman, this monster. Why would I say that to someone like her? In my entire lifetime, I've only made and kept sincere promises to a mere two people. Hana Evans and Eleanor Chandler. No one else. The rest of those who claim I promise anything to them can go fuck themselves. Bloody hell, I may enjoy the company of women, but I am not an idiot to start spouting such nonsense to anyone. A line must be drawn, especially if I am to keep myself alive. Yet she still goes on, insists, making me appear a liar in front of these people. Of course you still deny it. Have you truly forgotten? You haven't changed, I see. Still a deceiver. She's lying! 
You see, my love, nothing has changed. Still no difference, you and I. Just like the rest of us. Just like every single soul in this putrid wreck. We've waited for so long. You can hear them, yes? Their pleas, their calls, their invitation. Come, my lord. The house seeks its master. She, the monster, reaches out again, her hands a gory, abhorrent sight, along with that smile spread across her face. My body's already moving on instinct. Stumbling back one step at a time in a desperate bid to be away from her. Anything to put distance between me and this vile creature. No matter what she says, I am nothing like her. I need to get out of this house. Out of this country, preferably. Take Hana with me. We can start a new life out of this dreadful city. Start a family. There's nothing for us here. Her parents were long gone. Nothing to keep us tied to this place. Shroken has likely been taken by this woman, and he's not what binds me to this wretched city. I only need Hana. We can leave. We can- Careful, Luke! My foot steps on something, sending me sliding on my back and flat on the floor. Beside me, a paper, familiar one, flutters down. It's this thing again from the open house, though it feels less like a gimmick and more like a threat, what with recent events. It must have fallen from the detective in the commotion earlier. And with its owner having met a gruesome death, now it simply bears its equally grisly message for everyone in the room to see. Help me. Help me. Help me. Is this it? What they've been telling us? Why everything in my life has gone to shite? Because of some stupid old letter? An invitation indeed. One I am not willing to accept. Not any time. From the top of the stairs, the creature moves again, drawing my attention back to her. Her gait remains slow and awkward as she walks forward, the smile never leaving her. But I don't. I won't give her the chance. I am not dying here. I certainly am not giving myself to a hideous creature like her, either. Adrenaline kicks in, and despite panic gasps and worried glances from the people in the room, I pay them no mind as I reach for the main door, and... Without warning, it slams open, revealing not the mansion grounds like I am expecting. Before my mind can even comprehend what's happening, black tendrils have already coiled tightly around my limbs, dragging every person in the foyer into the room. None of us even get to scream when darkness completely envelops us upon the door's closing. Understand where your place is now, my love. You belong here. Is it so difficult to grasp? We've been waiting. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't be able to skip here, and I'm curious if Becca's going to be like, we need to sacrifice him, and then <laughs> Hana and Mint are going to be like, um, no? There's a moment of panic when the feeling of the tendrils around my limbs finally dissipates. As soon as my eyes adjust to the darkness of the room and I'm on my feet, I'm reaching for my knife and holding it out, watching, waiting for every movement. Using it as a way to put distance between me and these peasants. Who knows what they'll do now. We're all desperate to get out of this house. There's only four of us in this room. I cannot trust these people not to turn on me. Bloody hell, even Hana's giving me the same looks as them now. Though Mint has already gone loon, crouched in a corner and muttering to herself, you can't really say anyone's safe from her. If anything, she's the one I should watch out for. I cannot trust anyone. Not anymore. Not after this. Everything. Everything that I've built has fallen apart. All because these people came into our lives. You! All of you! This is all your fault! If I've died to this bloody case, I'm taking you all down with me! Put that knife down, Lucille! Luke, calm down. You're just making this worse. Interesting that she actually tried to calm him down. You shut your mouth! If it weren't for you, or this letter, for all of you, none of this would have happened! And blaming everyone in this room isn't going to get us out of this place! Please put that knife down, darling. You might hurt yourself. Are you taking their side? You're also stuck in this nightmare, Buttercup! What about the children? Aren't you the least bit worried about them? That creature is out to get us, and you're still defending these people! I'm not defending anyone, Luke! I'm just trying to be reasonable when you're clearly not. Oh, of course you're not. You're just the one who bought this bloody margin to begin with. If I didn't know any better, you did this on purpose. Why, no. Why would I ever do that? This was only meant to be an anniversary gift for you, for us, 
for the family we're going to have. Right, anniversary gift. Oh, here's your gift, darling. Oh, by the way, there's a curse included in that package. I hope that's all right. Are you really that eager to get rid of me, Hana? Because if that's what you've been meaning to do all this time, you might as well just put a knife in my back while I'm... Suddenly, Hana steps up and slaps the knife away from my hand. Said knife slides uselessly under the table out of my reach. Before my mind registers what's happening, a sharp blow explodes in the side of my head, sending me reeling backwards. She merely stands before me afterwards without even batting an eye, glaring at me as if she might just rip my head off in this instant. Sometimes, I forget. Don't you dare, Luke. Don't you dare imply I've ever thought of you that way. But Hana is never the weak woman I believed her to be. How did I come to think of her as such? She used to be someone I can look up to, isn't she? When you look at her now, the way she stands tall facing a man like me, the same way she has done so all those years ago, I can't help but think, am I not responsible for taking that part of herself away from her? Enjoy your time as Mrs. Luke Wright. What a bunch of shite. Realizing this, I can only look away when she reaches up and places a hand on my face. Gone is the anger in it, and only a soft smile remains while she looks at me with a shine in her eyes. The seven years we've been together, I've only been nothing but a piece of shite to her. Yet here she is, still smiling at me the way she has done so many years ago. It's impossible not to feel like a complete and utter trash like this. She has an uncanny way of doing that to me, really. Especially when she takes my hand in hers and places it right in her tummy. Right where two tiny babies are still growing. Ours. Not look at me. We've already talked about this. If we are still going to do this, it has to be the two of us. I will stay with you, but things are going to have to change if we want this to work. We can't keep doubting each other like this. Not until we find a way out of here. I'm sure we can. Maybe they know something we don't. You're going to rely on them for that? These peasants who brought this on us? Keep talking about us like that and see if any of us here will keep you out of this place. The gall of these people. Bloody peasants. My head's already aching just listening to their attempts to defend themselves. Did they all take me for someone with half a brain? I should have just stabbed all of them and made a run for it. It doesn't help that with each second we spend talking here, the crazier this whole place gets. One of us here, in particular. Amidst the furor, Mint suddenly stands. I've almost forgotten she's here, her ramblings having faded away in the shouting. And without warning, she snatches the paper out of my hand. It's a miracle it didn't rip right there and there, but the way she glares at it, I think she may want to do exactly that. It's this thing's fault! We should have gotten rid of this thing! We should have burned it at the first opportunity we got! There were children! Victims! All because they had no idea what this thing would do to them! Oh god, those poor souls! They were screaming and begging before she- This cursed thing has to go! She's losing grip with reality, she is. A crazy woman is the last thing I want to deal with, for fuck's sake. The whole world has already gone bonkers as it is. Oh, really, Becca? You had nothing to contribute. Great. The voices have also become louder and somehow sounding more vicious. If the things in this room start floating, mark my words, I will fucking flip out. And they may not be thinking of it right now, but eventually, eventually, they'll turn on me. Such is the nature of humans. I can't let that happen. Fuck, I still have so much to do. Better find a way out of this place as soon as possible if I want to stay alive. And what else is the source of our problem but that sodding letter? Burning this doesn't seem sound, but who knows? We don't understand a shite about this place. Might as well try everything, yeah? Mint may have a point as questionable as her judgment is right now. Whatever works. If I also have to be the one to make that bloody decision, so be it. And it's an easy decision to make, especially with these cries growing louder. I'm getting tired of it, really. I simply have to act fast. Think fast, and what else is the root cause of our problems but that letter? No need to make things more complicated. It started from there, why won't it end there? If what Mint has said is true, then there's all the more reason to destroy it. Put an end to this madness before anyone can think of passing it on to someone else. Before the situation can stretch on far too long for my taste, I snatch the blast of paper away. Give me that. For a second she appears offended, until I take out Mum's lighter. The sight of it shuts them all up but I have no need for their opinion. In the next moment, I'm already setting the letter on fire. Okay. Should be able to skip now, and then pause. Okay. Let's just 
clear this nonsense away so it's all nice and tidy like delightful save here yes and then we can skip ahead and see if we got the ending we were going for give me that variant and then we can check our branching stuff yes we did it Often, when she can afford it, she helps out in times when her friend's aunt can't care for her. Even speaking to the girl as if she's awake, listening to her mindless ramblings. However, though she wants to remain optimistic on her friend's chances, it dwindles with every failed attempt of the doctors to bring her out of coma, and each passing day the girl stays asleep. In the middle of the constant beeping of machines in the room, she can only wait. Aw. And Becca had the, uh... Least amount of hope for her out of the cast of three. But she's like, well, it's my only friend that's still alive, technically. Okay, so let's check the gallery. So, there we go. So the next one we're gonna go for is Ashton visiting her. But first, before we get into that, let's look at our branching tree. 45, eh? Hey, we got to 94 with Ashton. Cool. All right. Luke, why won't you just get me to 50? Come on. Come on, man. Why you gotta do me that way? All right. Well, with that, we still have time in this episode. So I'm going to start working on Ashton visiting Bella at the end, and I will bring you in if something changes along the way, everybody. Okay, so as it turns out, this run involved everybody else dying, so no new nodes were to be had, which means we don't have to check our branching tree. That's a negatory on that. This should only increase the percentages of the endings that we've gotten, so I guess we'll just see what this variant end was and move on with our lives. Watching over the comatose girl, sometimes staying for hours on end, simply sharing a comfortable silence between them. Well, I'm sure Bella appreciates that after all the ranting and raving from Becca last time. On occasion, he offers help to her aunt when he can, something the woman appreciates, knowing she can't be there for the sleeping girl every hour of the day. And though Ashton never speaks of it, a part of him knows this is the last thing keeping him from falling apart. Oh, So he hopes, desperately, earnestly. However, though he wants to remain optimistic on Isabella's chances, it dwindles with every failed attempt of the doctors to bring her out of coma, and each passing day the girl stays asleep. Amidst the constant beeping of machines in her room, he can only pray. He's... No, oh, that is like the saddest thing they could have written at the end for that. Because he gave up on religion. <laughs> he gave up on religion and superstition when he was a kid, and he's just like, well, I'll give this to... To Bella and stuff, because she believes in that nonsense. And he's just, like, so desperate now that he prays that she'll wake up. Oh, that, that broke my heart. Ashton Frey, curse you. Curse you for breaking my heart. That was the saddest one. For obvious reasons. Okay, so what is next? Okay, it looks like it's going to be Zachary and Ashton visiting Bella. So Becca's gonna die our next run. We'll keep these two bros alive. Alright, so let's begin again. We still have plenty of time, but nothing changed in that last run, so I will bring you in if and when something changes. Maybe there's more than one of it. Oh. Zachary hidden me up with the new node. Even my friend, the, the priest from the cathedral, he's been acting strangely. I visited him a few days ago and. He... he was hysterical. They think he's sick, but I have a feeling what the real case might be. Oh, right, because I didn't go and show the photos to Ashton in this run, so he saw the priest this time. Interesting. There might be more than one of that paper going around that we don't know about. More to this. He has a point, but there's a lot of gap in that logic. Somehow, even with all this information in hand, it still feels like there's something we're overlooking. All we have to go with is the letter and all the stuff selfish people have been keeping from the public, but what else? Where this all started? The Ermengarde Mansion? Will bringing the letter back there fix everything? Ugh. <laughs> okay. Well, if something else changes, I'll bring you guys in again. 
Okay, we are in Luke's chapter, so I guess it's going to count as a new branch onto itself because Zachary and Ashton are alive this time around. It's a slow thing, a whisper more than a bang as the darkness creeps into every corner of the room. The walls shudder and groan. Blood runs from the ceiling, crawls down the walls, and stains the floor. It feels as if life itself is being sucked from the house slowly but surely. The beauty of the place is gone, with only the dead, decaying remains of a mansion left in its wake. I don't have to wonder if it is just the foyer that's become this nightmarish place. I can already hear it. Gone are the growling of thunder and the lashings of rain and wind against the foyer's high windows. All of it has been replaced by a more grating sound. A cacophony of voices from nowhere and everywhere echoing throughout the now horrid walls. Voice that neither belongs to us nor the people who live here. What? What's going on? All throughout the house, shouts of alarm and surprise ring out, a mirror to the horror creeping up in each of us. Who wouldn't be shocked? This is insane. Meanwhile, both Steel and Feathers hold their ground. Brave of them, I have to admit, to put themselves in the front line like that. Though it doesn't necessarily mean they don't feel the same fear as the rest of us. Something I don't blame them for. There seems to be no end in sight to this insanity. If anything, this only feels like it's the beginning of the end. <laughs> interesting when it goes through the list of people that have died. It counts Isabella in here, even though she isn't technically dead yet. She's in a coma. I don't know why. It's just something interesting. Their screams fill the mansion. She laughs all the while, a harsh agonizing sound that goes on for what feels like forever. Okay, we branch in Luke. Until there is nothing but silence, her horrid smile and pale hands reaching out to me. We branch in. Colin. Beckoning, pleading. I better get at least a percentage from you, Luke. That's all I'm saying. I'm terrified. I really am, like I should be. But I've never been one to truly stay afraid. I've long learned that fear will not get me anywhere. Cowering in a corner doesn't keep me safe, and it will not keep me alive. Not like rage does. I've learned to use this burning hate inside of me to survive. There is no difference uh, stay now. Stay away from me! Why? Why do you wish to leave? This is where you belong, my lord. Remember the blood we share? This is your home. Don't you remember? You promised to return. To stay together with me. With us. With people no different from you. W what is she talking about, Luke? What does she mean? Don't listen to her. She lies. I promised no such thing to anyone. Hannah, you're the one who bought this house. How should I know what she's bobbling about? I never even wanted to be here in the first place. A terrible case of mistaken identity. That must be it. I'm quite sure of it. I don't know this woman, this monster. Why would I say that to someone like her? In my entire lifetime, I've only made and kept sincere promises to a mere two people. Hannah Evans and Eleanor Chandler. No one else. The rest of those who claim I promise anything to them can go fuck themselves. Bloody hell. I may enjoy the company of women, but I am not an idiot to start spouting such nonsense to anyone. A line must be drawn, especially if I am to keep myself alive. Yet she still goes on, insists, making me appear a liar in front of these people. Of course you still deny it. Have you truly forgotten? You haven't changed, I see. Still a deceiver. She's lying! You see, my love, nothing has changed. Still no difference, you and I. <laughs> Just like the rest of us. Just like every single soul in this putrid wreck. We've waited for so long. You can hear them, yes. Their pleas, their calls, their invitation. Come, my lord. The house seeks its master. She, the monster, reaches out again, her hands a gory, abhorrent sight, along with that smile spread across her face. My body is already moving on instinct. Stumbling back, one step at a time, in a desperate bid to be away from her. Anything to put distance between me and this vile creature. 
No matter what she says, I am nothing like her. I need to get out of this house. Out of this country, preferably. Take Hana with me. We can start a new life out of this dreadful city. Start a family. There's nothing for us here. Her parents were long gone. Nothing to keep us tied to this place. Shroken has likely been taken by this woman, and he's not what binds me to this wretched city. I only need Hana. We can leave. We can- Careful, Luke! My foot steps on something, sending me sliding on my back and flat on the floor. Beside me, a paper. Familiar one flutters down. It's this thing again from the open house. Though it feels less like a gimmick and more like a threat, what with recent events. It must have fallen from one of these peasants in the commotion earlier. For a moment they appear conflicted to see it in my hands, but wisely keeps their opinions to themselves. Leaving the damn thing to simply bear its grisly message for everyone in the room to see. Help me. Help me. Help me. Is this it? What they've been telling us? Why everything in my life has gone to shite? Because of some stupid old letter? An invitation indeed. One I am not willing to accept. Not any time. From the top of the stairs, the creature moves again, drawing my attention back to her. Her gait remains slow and awkward as she walks forward, that smile never leaving her. But I don't. I won't give her the chance. I am not dying here. I certainly am not giving myself to a hideous creature like her, either. Adrenaline kicks in, and despite panic gasps and worried glances from the other people here, I pay them no mind as I reach for the main door and... Without warning, it slams open, revealing not the mansion grounds, like I am expecting. Before my mind can even comprehend what's happening, black tendrils have already coiled tightly around my limbs, dragging every person in the foyer into the room. None of us even get to scream when darkness completely envelops us upon the doors closing. Understand where your place is now, my love. You belong here. Is it so difficult to grasp? We've been waiting. <laughs> okay, we'll see what changes here with Zack and Ashton in play. There's a moment of panic when the feeling of the tendrils around my limbs finally dissipates. As soon as my eyes adjust to the darkness of the room and I'm on my feet, I'm reaching for my knife and holding it out, watching, waiting for every movement. Using it as a way to put distance between me and these peasants. Who knows what they'll do now? We're all desperate to get out of this house. There's only four of us in this room, two of them friends at that. I cannot trust these people not to turn on me. Bloody hell, even Hana's giving me the same looks as them now. I cannot trust anyone. Not anymore. Not after this. Everything. Everything that I've built has fallen apart. All because these people came into our lives. You! All of you! This is all your fault! If I've died to this bloody case, I'm taking you all down with me! Put that knife down, Lucille! I'm gonna see if I can skip from here. Hey, hey now, Mr. Wright! I, I know the situation ain't good. But we have to calm down. No such luck. We're all in the same boat here. You shut your mouth! If it weren't for you, or this letter, for all of you, none of this would have happened! And blaming everyone in this room isn't going to get us out of this place. Please put that knife down, darling. You might hurt yourself. Are you taking their side? You're also stuck in this nightmare, Buttercup! What about the children? Aren't you the least bit worried about them? That creature is out to get us, and you're still defending these people! I'm not defending anyone, Luke. I'm just trying to be reasonable when you're clearly not. Oh, of course you're not. You're just the one who bought this bloody margin to begin with. If I didn't know any better, you did this on purpose! Why, no! Why would I ever do that? This was only meant to be an anniversary gift for you, for us, for the family we're going to have. Right, anniversary gift. Oh, here's your gift, darling. Oh, by the way, there's a curse included in that package. I hope that's all right. Are you really that eager to get rid of me, Hana? Because if that's what you've been meaning to do all this time, you might as well just put a knife in my back while I'm... Suddenly, Hana steps up and slaps the knife away from my hand. Said knife slides uselessly under the table out of my reach. Before my mind registers what's happening, a sharp blow explodes on the side of my head, sending me reeling backwards. Never gets old watching her punch him. She merely stands before me afterwards, without even batting an eye, glaring at me as if she might just rip my head off in this instant. Sometimes I forget. Don't you dare, Luke! Don't you dare imply I've ever thought of you that way! That Hana is never the weak woman I believed her to be. How did I come to think of her as such? She used to be someone I can look up to, isn't she? When you look at her now, the way she stands tall facing a man like me, the same way she has done so all those years ago, I can't help but think, am I not responsible for taking that part of herself away from her? Enjoy your time as Mrs. Luke Wright. 
What a bunch of shite. Realizing this, I can only look away when she reaches up and places a hand on my face. Gone is the anger in it, and only a soft smile remains while she looks at me with a shine in her eyes. The seven years we've been together, I've only been nothing but a piece of shite to her. Yet here she is, still smiling at me the way she has done so many years ago. It's impossible not to feel like a complete and utter trash like this. She has an uncanny way of doing that to me, really. Especially when she takes my hand in hers and places it right in her tummy. Right where two tiny babies are still growing. Ours. Love, look at me. We've already talked about this. If we are still going to do this, it has to be the two of us. I will stay with you, but things are going to have to change if we want this to work. We can't keep doubting each other like this. Not until we find a way out of here. I'm sure we can. Maybe they know something we don't. Okay, boys, what you got for me? You're going to rely on them for that. These peasants who brought this on us. The gall of these people. Bloody peasants. My head's already aching just listening to their attempts to defend themselves. Do they all take me for someone with half a brain? I should have just stabbed all of them and made a run for it. It doesn't help that with each second we spend talking here, the crazier this whole place gets. Boys, I am majorly disappointed in you. <laughs> you contributed nothing to this. You might as well have just left Hana and Luke on their own. The voices have also become louder and somehow sounding more vicious. If the things in this room start floating, mark my words, I will fucking flip out. And they may not be thinking of it right now, but eventually, eventually, they'll turn on me. Such is the nature of humans. I can't let that happen. Fuck, I still have so much to do! Better find a way out of this place as soon as possible if I want to stay alive. And what else is the source of our problem but that sodding letter? Burning this doesn't seem sound, but who knows. We don't understand a shite about this place. Might as well try everything, yeah? Whatever works. If I also have to be the one to make that bloody decision, so be it. And it's an easy decision to make, especially with these cries growing louder. I'm getting tired of it, really. I simply have to act fast. Think fast. And what else is the root cause of our problems but that letter? No need to make things more complicated. It started from there, why want it in there? Before the situation can stretch on far too long for my taste, I take up Mum's lighter. The sight of it brings a puzzled expression in their faces. But I have no need for their opinion. In the next moment, I'm already setting the letter on fire. I wasn't... Well done. I was wondering if they were going to have him say the line, you know, give me that. Because I'm like, you have the letter technically, Luke, so you shouldn't ask for it. Alright. Well, I'm so disappointed in Ash and Zack. <laughs> the only thing they did is stop the ghost from actually murderizing them, so I'm like, okay, well, at least that's a thing. Let's go. Let's see if we can get that epilogue. Oh, they're friends. That's nice. In spite of the huge changes in their lives, Ashton and Zack never forget to visit Isabella Santos. Bringing little stories they have no idea if she ever hears, but tells nevertheless, carrying a small prayer that they won't lose her. When they can afford it, they also help her aunt in caring for her. Something the woman appreciates, knowing she can't be there for the sleeping girl every hour of the day. However, though they want to remain optimistic on Isabella's chances, it dwindles with every failed attempt of the doctors to bring her out of coma, and each passing day the girl stays unconscious. Amidst the constant beeping of machines in her room, optimism is the only thing they can hold on to. Well, at least they're not falling apart, so that's good. I'm glad Ashton has a friend that he can share that with. Okay, so let's take a look. Man, 89%. So... There we go. We only have one more. Well, two, but I cannot get this until much later. So, well, when I say much later. So I got this, and then one good friendship ending. Okay. Well, with that being the case, I think I'll probably stop the video now then. And then next week, we'll get this end... And this end. And then we'll see how much time that takes, all in all. And then we'll start working on true endings, which will be very exciting. Um, okay, before I forget, let's just see if we actually moved the needle at all on these branching trees. 
branching tree. Okay, 46. Ashton did not move. He's still at 94. Ashton Frey. We had a whole other dialogue with Zach and everything. Okay, but we got a one more percent with Luke. Whee! That's so much work. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I'm going to call it there. I hope you guys enjoyed those variant endings. And yeah, next time might be potentially the last or working on the last stuff of the letter. We're going to be finished with this pretty soon. So that's exciting. But anyway, thanks again for joining me, guys. Until next time, I will see you later.